So generative AI is everywhere, right? I mean, companies are throwing something like 30, maybe $40 billion at it. But here's the crazy part. What if I told you that for almost everyone, that money is just poof, disappearing into thin air? All right, let's really get into this, because some new research is showing this huge disconnect between all the hype and what's actually happening on the ground. Okay, get ready for this. This is the number that should make everyone just stop. A stunning 95% of organizations are getting zero, and I mean literally zero return on their Gen AI investments. That failure rate is just, it's so massive, we have to ask, what is going on? And that what's going on? Well, it actually has a name. It's called the Gen AI divide. And believe me, it is a massive gap. So you've got this tiny little group, just 5% of companies, who are unlocking millions in real value. And then there's everyone else. The other 95%? They're just stuck in what you might call pilot purgatory. You know, endless trials with absolutely nothing to show for it on the PL. Okay, so what does it actually feel like to be on the wrong side of this divide? Well, it's a world where everyone's using AI, but nothing's actually changing. Let's break down exactly what that looks like. I mean, just look at this chart. It's not a slope, it's a cliff. So you see, about 60% of companies will poke around and investigate these tools. But that number just plummets to 20% who actually start a pilot. And from there, a tiny, tiny 5% ever get that tool into production where it can actually do something useful. That right there, that is the pilot to production chasm. And you know, this isn't just some abstract data point. This quote I found from a CIO, man, it just nails the frustration perfectly. They're seeing dozens of demos, but maybe one or two are genuinely useful. The rest... They feel like flimsy wrappers on a generic model, or just science projects, not real business solutions. So where is all this cash actually going? Well, a whopping 70% of AI budgets are getting funneled straight into sales and marketing. And why? You know why. The metrics are easy. Things like how many demos you did or how many emails got a response, that's easy to show the board. But is that where the real value is hiding? Spoiler alert, not even close. The research is pretty clear. The biggest, most concrete wins are happening in the back office. Yeah, the less glamorous stuff, but the absolutely critical functions. We're talking about saving millions by getting rid of outsourced processing, slashing agency spending by a third, automating these super complex risk checks. The ROI, it's just hiding in plain sight. Okay, so this brings us to the real heart of the issue, the why. Why are 95% of these things failing? And it's not what you think. It's not about the AI models being bad or dumb. It's something much more fundamental. It's something called the learning gap. And this is where things get really interesting. There's this paradox, right? Your employees, they love their personal AI tools. They're on ChatGPT every day because it feels better, it's familiar. But then the company rolls out some big official enterprise tool and everyone hates it. They call it brittle, misaligned with how they actually get work done. And you can see this preference pretty clearly right here. For the quick stuff, you know, drafting an email or making a summary, yeah, 70% of people are happy to use AI. But for the really complex, high stakes work, the stuff that takes weeks, whoa, humans are preferred nine to one. The trust just, it's not there. And all of this, all of it comes back to that learning gap we mentioned. It's the fact that most enterprise AI just can't do the one thing humans do naturally, learn. They don't remember feedback. They forget all the context the second you close the window. They can't improve. And that makes them pretty much useless for the complex workflows where the real money is made. Okay, okay, so that's the problem. It sounds pretty bleak, but what about that 5% who are actually winning? Let's take a look at how the best builders out there, the AI vendors and startups, are actually getting across this divide. So what do these big companies actually want? What are they looking for? Well, it's not more features. It's not a flashier demo. Just look at the top of this chart. The number one thing they're asking for is a system that can improve over time. Basically, they want to solve the learning gap. And right behind that, they need vendors who get their workflows, like really get them, and vendors they can actually trust. And that trust thing, it's huge. It is absolutely massive. This quote from a head of procurement at a big CPG company just says it all. They're basically saying, look, in a world flooded with AI startups, we're way more likely to just wait for our existing partner to add AI than to gamble on some new kid on the block. All right, so now let's flip the script. How do the smartest buyers, the enterprises themselves, play this game so they end up on the winning side of the divide? You know, when it comes to actually getting this stuff working, 
partnering up with an external vendor is literally twice as likely to succeed as trying to build it all yourself. I mean, look at the numbers, a 67% success rate for buying and partnering versus just 33% if you go it alone. That old idea that the best companies build their own tools, yeah, it's a myth. So what are these winning companies actually doing differently? It turns out they're following four key practices. First, they demand deep customization, not some one-size-fits-all software. Second, they measure success based on real business outcomes, not some fuzzy AI metric. Third, they treat their vendors like partners, meaning they work through the early hiccups together. And maybe most importantly, they get their ideas for AI projects from the frontline managers, the people who actually know what the real problems are. So all of this, it's pointing towards a future that looks really different from the tools we have right now. The ultimate solution to this whole learning gap problem, it's something researchers are starting to call agentic AI. And you know what? There's a real sense of urgency to all this. If you look at this 18-month timeline, you can see the window is closing, and it's closing fast. Right now, today, companies are choosing their dance partners. They're locking in these learning-capable systems. And once you've spent months and months training an AI on your company's specific data and workflows, the cost to switch to someone else, it becomes enormous. It's prohibitive. And this is all leading to the end game, which is something called the agentic web. Now, this is not just a smarter chatbot. Think bigger. We're talking about a whole ecosystem of autonomous AI agents that can learn, remember, and actually coordinate with each other to get work done. It's like moving from static, dumb applications to dynamic, living workflows. So, let's bring it all home. What does all of this mean for you? The path across this Gen AI divide is actually pretty clear once you see it. First, stop throwing money at static tools that have amnesia. Prioritize vendors who offer systems that can actually learn and adapt. Next, empower your frontline managers, the people who actually do the work, to lead the adoption. And finally, focus on deep, meaningful workflow integration, not just another flashy demo. So here's the bottom line. The gap between all the AI hype and the reality, it's real, but it's not impossible to cross. It just requires a really fundamental shift in how we think about buying, building, and using these incredibly powerful new technologies. So the final question I'll leave you with is this. As that 18-month window slams shut, is your organization on the right side of the divide?